Chemical engineers apply the principles of chemistry, biology, physics, and math to solve problems. They use their knowledge in these fields to create products in the agricultural industry, the energy sector, and the consumer industry. In this video, we're gonna help you figure out whether chemical engineering is the field for you. We're gonna go over wages, demand, requirements, and more. Chemical engineers can also be known as process engineers, and often they're specializing in a particular area. This field could be biological engineering, it could be working with extremely small materials such as nanomaterials, and they can be involved in the oil and gas industry, one byproduct of which is plastics. Often chemical engineers have to understand the manufacturing side of things, but they also have to understand the science side of things. Often they have to work with other kinds of engineers such as biomedical engineers and petroleum engineers. Like pretty much every other engineering field, chemical engineering is extremely male dominated. According to the latest government data, 87% of chemical engineers identify as male, 9% identify as Hispanic or Latino, and 85% identify as white, 2% African American, and 13% Asian. One thing you definitely tend to notice when you look at the different engineering fields is engineers actually tend to like their roles. In 2014, Payscale did a meaning survey and they found that 73% of chemical engineers reported extreme satisfaction or fair satisfaction with their job, and 61% reported that their work makes the world a better place. It's definitely hard choosing a career and many people choose the wrong career. In 2021, a Harris poll found that 47% of older millennials wish they had chosen a different career path. This is terrible news because the average yearly cost of a public college is now $35,551 per year. This is why we created Choose the Right Career. There's over 1,000 different occupations to choose from, and we believe that the ideal career for a particular person has a combination of factors. It needs to pay enough, carry your interests, be compatible with your values and personality, and there needs to be a demand for it. In this course, we provide a seven-step process so you can identify your ideal career. Check out the link below for more details. Chemical engineering is one of 16 different engineering fields, and some of these engineering fields have a lot of people within them that have master's degrees, doctoral degrees. Luckily, this isn't the case for chemical engineering. According to the Occupational Information Network, 82% of chemical engineers employed have a bachelor's degree, 9% have a master's degree, and 9% have a doctoral degree. There's definitely certain engineering fields, such as aerospace engineering, where a lot of the people within it have a master's degree. And further down the line, many chemical engineers will get their professional engineering certification. This makes them more attractive in the job market. One advantage to going into chemical engineering over some of the other engineering fields is chemical engineering is a little bit more lucrative than many of the other engineering fields. The government just released the 2021 wage numbers and they found that chemical engineers on average earn $121,840 per year before any benefits or overtime. This makes chemical engineering the fourth highest paying engineering field in terms of average base salary. Chemical engineering is really only beat out by aerospace engineering, computer hardware engineering, and petroleum engineering. And chemical engineers actually saw a lot of wage growth between 2020 and 2021. In 2016, the average base salary for a chemical engineer was $105,420. This rose to $121,840 in 2021. And in 2020, it was $114,820. This means between 2020 and 2021, there was a $7,020 wage growth for chemical engineers or a 6% raise. Definitely not bad for an occupation that just requires a bachelor's degree. And to make matters even crazier, there's actually certain parts of the country that pay chemical engineers a lot more than others. And there's two Texas cities that tend to pay chemical engineers a lot of money, and there's actually a lot of employment opportunities down in these two cities. The highest paying metro area for chemical engineers is Houston, Texas, where the average base salary is $173,640. And if you factor in benefits at 30%, this brings average total compensation to around 225,000 per year. And there's about 4,000 employed chemical engineers in the Houston, Texas metro area. Another hot place for chemical engineers is Dallas, Texas. And here the average base salary is 151,000. Average total compensation would be around 197,000. But the workforce in Dallas, Texas for chemical engineers is much smaller than in Houston. Now these chemical engineers are most likely working in the oil and gas industry. And this industry is prone for booms and busts. Sometimes you'll be making tons and tons of money as a chemical or even a petroleum engineer. But you know, maybe three years later, there's an oil bust and a lot of people get laid off. So definitely keep your eyes open for that kind of situation. Next up, what is the demand like for chemical engineers? This is actually a much smaller occupation than many people think. There's far less chemical engineers in the United States workforce than you would think. This is also from the 2021 numbers. 
the U.S. government found that there's around 25,000 employed chemical engineers in 2021. This is not one of the big engineering fields such as civil engineering, industrial, and mechanical engineering. Each of those engineering fields has around 300,000 employed. Chemical engineering only has around 25,000. The number of chemical engineers employed has not been rising like other engineering fields and definitely not like software development. In fact, we can look at the number of employed chemical engineers over time. This is also from the Bureau of Labor Statistics. In 2016, there was around 32,000 employed chemical engineers. This peaked in 2017 at around 34,000. But by 2021, the number of employed chemical engineers has fallen to around 24,000 in the entire United States. This means between 2016 and 2021, there's been a loss of almost 8,000 employed chemical engineers in the U.S. workforce. So not a great sign for chemical engineers. The fact that there's less employed chemical engineers today than there were five years ago. That's definitely not a good sign. But keep in mind that chemical engineers have that engineering skill set, which is they can use to transfer into many other occupations. In fact, a field such as software development has been picking up engineers, physicists, mathematicians for years. So people that say major in engineering doesn't necessarily mean that they're going to go into chemical engineering for the long haul they can potentially go into petroleum engineering and some of the other engineering fields. Another thing we can look at is job posting data. How many job postings are there for chemical engineers right now? So this is a great way for looking at the demand for chemical engineer. I went on a glass door, I searched for chemical engineer in the United States. I found around 6,000 job postings. Meanwhile, on indeed.com searching for chemical engineer in the United States, I got around 10,000 job postings. And finally on LinkedIn, I found over 40,000 job postings for chemical engineers. So when you compare the number of job postings against the number of employed chemical engineers, it actually looks fantastic. There's plenty of job postings for chemical engineers in the United States. So this kind of just shows you that even though the number of employed has fallen, there's still plenty of demand for chemical engineers. And this isn't even to say that the government is bearish on the future outlook for chemical engineers. They're projecting a 9% increase in the number of jobs over the next 10 years. Some of the drops in employed might be due to maybe kind of busts in the oil and gas industry, petroleum and chemical engineers. A lot of their jobs are kind of going up and down based off the oil and gas industry. But with a 9% outlook, the government is pretty bullish on the future demand of chemical engineer. Finally, we get into the Myers-Briggs personality assessment. A lot of people like to use this particular tool to choose a career. It's really just one component if you're trying to use it to choose a career. It's just one of many different factors you should consider before choosing a particular occupation. But according to the Myers-Briggs company, they found that the most common type found within chemical engineering is the ISTJ, also known as the inspector. In this particular type, if you're an ISTJ, a lot of the engineering fields attract ISTJs. Uh, the second most common type is the ESTJ, the director, and third, the ENTP, the debater. The Myers-Briggs company also releases the most likely type, a little bit different, the most common type and the most likely type to become a chemical engineer. So even though the ISTJ is the most common type, the most likely type they found to be INTJ. This is because there's not quite as many INTJs as there are ISTJs, according to the Myers-Briggs company. Second most likely type is the ENTJ, and third is the ENTP. Once again, the debater. So I hope this video helped you figure out whether chemical engineering is the occupation for you. If you're a chemical engineer, let us know down in the comments below. What do you enjoy about this occupation and what do you dislike about this particular occupation? Would love to hear your thoughts. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you soon in the next video.